Hello, welcome back. In the second part of the renewable natural resources, I will uh, discuss with you some uh, insights from forest economics. So I will talk about the commercial timber production. And uh, on this uh, talk, uh, I will use as the materials the lecture slides by David Zilberban uh, at uh, University of California at Berkeley. So here is an, a graphical illustration, first of all, about the forestry growth function. And compared to these uh, logistic growth models uh, that uh, I discussed with you in the previous lesson, notice here that the um, uh, horizontal axis here is time and the vertical axis is the stock of timber. So this Q is the, is the volume of timber, not the, not the growth rate, unlike in these previous figures. So the idea here is that uh, that the volume of timber, uh, where from if if you think about the land that has been clear cut, then then it starts to grow again. Then first the growth rate is very very low, but accelerates over time, and then eventually there is some turning point where the growth rate uh, uh, starts to decrease, and then there is this uh, uh, point T max. It where this uh, growth rate becomes totally so the so this uh, curve becomes totally flat, and here is then this T max is this uh, maximum timber that that can be can be produced, and after that point then if you wait too long time then then actually the volume of timber starts to decrease it doesn't grow anymore at least that's that's in principle possibility. So I believe that this. Uh, uh, Ray one indicates that uh, that um, it doesn't doesn't uh, it's not very useful to wait too long time before harvesting. But on the other hand, it's also not uh, not to harvest too early because then then uh, you you lose some valuable growth. So these rays from the origin, there's two two rays indicated, Ray one and Ray two. So notice that the growth rate is constant along the ray. So, so in that sense, these rays represent these growth rates that I, I indicated in the previous lesson. And um, the highest uh, growth rate is obtained with this ray two. So this ray two passes this, uh, this uh, function Q at the time point T subscript MSY. So this MSI refers to maximum sustainable yield, maximum sustainable yield. So there, there, this kind of biological growth rate is at its highest. But uh, I will show that uh, that uh, from the point of view of economics, it's not always optimal to, and it is not necessarily optimal to to harvest when the when the when the maximum sustainable yield is obtained. So typically, the optimal harvest is somewhere between this maximum sustainable yield and uh, T max. So that that kind of gives the range where the where the optimal harvest would typically take place. So let's consider it a little bit more formally then, and take a bit more more math. So let's start with the most simple simplest model when we when we only think about the single rotation. So suppose that uh, that we have a, a forest owner who's only considering a, a single uh, single rotation. So so she lets the forest grow and then then harvests at some point and then for example sells away also the land after this after the harvest so there's only single single rotation and uh, and the forest owner doesn't consider the the future generations at all so we can think about this uh, this uh, problem as as follows so so capital p indicates the the here it's indicate constant price per pound of the crop. So this would be this kind of price of timber. Uh, harvesting costs are assumed away, but we can also alternatively think that this uh, P is a, is a constant price per cubic meter, for example, uh, net price uh, in, in excess of the harvesting. So, so suppose that the forest owner sells this kind of uh, timber uh, with a net price uh, where this, this price uh, it includes also the the harvesting costs. So therefore, the profit is just P times Q. P was the net price, and Q is the 
is the volume of timber, but we will also need to take into account the discounting. So time is T and R is the discount rate. We can think of R as, a, as an interest rate. So, so of course there is opportunity cost for the, for the forest owner because uh, there's always alternative that this, uh, this, um, uh, this timber is, is harvested and then the profits are invested or, or put to a put to a like a bank account. So think about this R as a, as a, as for example the interest rate on a, on the bank account. So this gives us this kind of objective function on the bottom of the slide. We maximize pi, and and there is this kind of discount factor times price times quantity. Okay. So. How do we then solve this kind of uh, optimization problem? So the main decision variable is the harvesting time here. Other, otherwise, everything is just constant. So we differentiate pi with respect to time t. And this gives us the first order condition. This FOC is this first order condition. And uh, basically, we, we can uh, write this uh, first order condition such that uh, there is price time uh, uh, time derivative of function q equals r times p times uh, q imperial t. So if you think about the left hand side, uh, we can we can interpret this as marginal benefit of waiting because there's this like uh, the value of new growth. So so this uh, q is this change of of uh, of uh, uh, timber volume over time and and p is price. So that that is this. Uh, this uh, marginal benefit if you, if you wait a little bit longer. But on the other hand, there is marginal cost of waiting. So there is the opportunity cost. Uh, so this is equal to the interest rate R times price times Q. So if the, if the, if the forest is harvested in period T, then the, then the revenue is P times Q. And then this can be uh, invested with the, with the rate of return R or interest rate R. So this optimality condition can be also rearranged maybe in a bit more intuitive way. So notice that we can, we can this price peak is canceled out on both sides of the equation. So we can, we can rewrite this equation and you can, you can take paper and pen to see this if, if you don't see it immediately. But, uh, but we, we can rewrite this uh, first order condition such that uh, this uh, time derivative of Q divided by Q is equal to R. So in other, otherwise, this kind of growth rate of, of uh, timber volume is equal to, to R. So this gives us this kind of rule that, uh, that um, we should harvest when the growth rate is equal to the interest rate. So let me come to the, to the figure then. So, so notice that we, I, I mentioned with this figure that, uh, that the optimal time is somewhere between this maximum sustainable yield and the maximum uh, volume. So depending on what is the, the interest rate R, this R then, then uh, can be thought of as this kind of uh, slope. Uh, it defines sort of slope uh, of the opportunity cost. That how, what is the growth rate of the uh, growth rate of money on your bank account? So, so optimal harvesting time is therefore when uh, this uh, this uh, growth rate in timber is equal to equal to to that amount because you notice that this growth rate is is increasing initially and then eventually it levels off and, and starts to decrease so some point there is this kind of uh, a time point when this growth rate of the of this forest asset is equal to the uh, constant growth rate on the, on your bank account okay so that's the intuition of this uh, this result i also want to refer back to this when we when we discussed the uh, non renewable resources so remember there was the hotelings rule and there there we find also also very very similar kind of uh, mathematically similar although the interpretation is somewhat different and it was derived from the different context but there also this kind of uh, um, optimal extraction of the non-renewable resource also had similar kind of structure that uh, that this rate of extraction would be at the optimal level when when this um, 
uh, there would be some kind of constant price over the over the time horizon. So mathematically, very similar result also applies to the here in the context of uh, renewable resource such as forest. So notice that here is nothing really intrinsically similar kind of kind of model could also apply to, for example, some other other natural uh, resource with the biological biological growth. So now I mentioned that uh, that in this problem we only considered a single single rotation, single harvest. So after after harvesting, we suppose that uh, this forest owner is then selling this asset, perhaps selling the land as well. But if you think about some kind of institutional investor, some some company or government, for example. So if we have like uh, like state owned uh, forest, so how should we how, how should we manage this kind of uh, uh, state-owned forest. So, of course, then then we should also take into account that uh, that when harvesting, then then we also replant the trees, and and then there's another generation of of uh, of uh, of timber growing, and so on. So, so the harvesting time also has the role that uh, it it uh, it starts this kind of new new growth. So uh, here, this this figure tries to illustrate that that there's like first. Uh, First generation of forest growth, then then it is harvested, and then then ne next uh, generation and third generation. So notice that the longer we let the that the let the one one generation grow, then this kind of time time gap between harvests also also increases. So uh, this kind of institutional investor or or state forest manager should also take into account that. Uh, that delaying the harvest too long time is also delaying these future, uh, future future generations of uh, of, uh, of forest, and this is the classic problem that uh, that uh, 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 Faustmann was considering already in the nineteenth century, and uh, and this has been also revisited uh, later by also also by by famous economists in the twentieth century. Um, including uh, Paul Samuelson. So so this is very interesting uh, interesting problem that uh, that so this kind of previous model does not take into account this uh, this kind of future uh, future generation. So so ultimately institutional investor would care about this kind of optimal rotation model. So how can we take into account that that, that basically there is uh, potentially infinitely many generations in the in the future so we we can utilize this kind of uh, mathematical results so if we have this kind of uh, sum of an infinite series where where this x is something less than one so if we have this kind of series that one plus x plus x squared plus x to power three plus and so on so on, and uh, um, until infinity then this kind of infinite series uh, will actually then uh, then uh, when we take a sum then then it can be shown that it is it is actually equal to one divided by one minus x. So this is an infinite geometric series. So we can utilize this mathematical result in the, this case because also when we take into account this kind of uh, discount factor. So so think about this kind of e to power minus i r t. So think about that we have this kind of constant length of of rotation. So so each generation of forest is uh, is growing capital T years, and then we then we uh, harvest uh, uh, with this kind of uh, cycle of every every T years. So then this kind of uh, infinite geometric series becomes one plus e to power minus R T plus e to power minus two times rt and so on and so on so it can be also shown that this this kind of sum uh, is equal to one divided by one minus e to power minus rt so this is just using this uh, 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 infinite geometric series to to get this kind of kind of result so therefore even though we have uh, uh, infinitely many rotations there's also also uh, it doesn't uh, explode to infinity, but there is a, a finite uh, discount factor that can be utilized. So 
using this result on this slide, there is this uh, this kind of Faustmann's uh, uh, optimal rotation problem is is uh, is um, or the objective function is is defined. So so our problem is to to maximize the the profits of this kind of infinitely many rotations. So I should say discounted net present value of this kind of infinitely many many rotations. And using this the results of the previous screen, previous slide, we can come up that that that, that this uh, this um, net present value is equal to price times uh, quantity with this kind of rotation length capital T divided by a discount factor of uh, e to power r capital T minus one. So again, you can you can take paper and pen and work on this. Uh, these technical details to to understand how we how we get there, but uh, but this is anyway relatively straightforward. So so then, how do we then optimize when we have this objective function? Then again, we need to take uh, take uh, derivative of this uh, uh, profit pi with respect to this uh, capital T. That is this uh, length of the length of each uh, rotation. And using then uh, differential calculus, uh, we can get the first order condition FOC, which is now slightly more complicated than in this uh, case of a single rotation. But anyway, we can we can uh, organize these terms in this uh, uh, so that uh, so that this um, optimality condition can be stated as uh, as what we have on the on the bottom line. So notice that. This is exactly the same kind of structure that we had in the case of single single rotation. So the left hand side is exactly the same as the as the in the case of a single rotation. The right hand side first term is also the same as in the in the case of the single rotation. But then we have now also in addition a second term that comes when we have this kind of uh, um, infinite infinite uh, horizon optimal rotation model. So it's only the second term that makes a difference here. And uh, if we if we think about it, the uh, economic interpretation for this uh, for this result is that uh, that again the left hand side we can think about it as a marginal revenue of delaying. So this is this how much the the forest is growing in addition if we wait a little bit longer. But on the other hand, there is this opportunity cost. So the so the first term is this marginal cost of uh, of waiting. This is this kind of foregone interest. And then the second term on the right hand side, which is now this what what this uh, infinite rotation model adds, is there is marginal cost of uh, delaying the future income streams. So the left hand side and the first term on the right hand side, they are exactly the same as in the case of the single rotation. But we now also need to take into account the marginal cost of uh, delaying the future uh, future rotations. Okay, so that's the additional additional uh, uh, part, uh, additional insight when we when we consider this kind of infinite uh, uh, infinite horizon model. And also. Uh, notice here is again this kind of similar result that I also mentioned in the case of the single rotation that in general this uh, uh, sorry that they, I noticed that in the case of single rotation this uh, this uh, optimal harvest is uh, shorter than this kind of maximum uh, uh, sustainable yield and when we take also into account this kind of delaying the future income stream then this becomes actually even shorter so so it makes sense to then then harvest earlier than than if if we compare to the situation that there's only a single single generation that we need to care about okay so this is an, an uh, interesting and uh, important result in the case of the uh, this kind of uh, uh, forest management known as this kind of uh, faustmann rule so in the next video, I will then continue on this theme and, and introduce some comparative statistics and, and some, some extensions. See you then. Bye-bye.